What's the famous last words of a drummer? Hey guys, I wrote another song. Okay, it's time for another episode with Hi-Fi Live, or uh, the angry audio file as some uh, are gonna call me, and that would probably be correct about now. Um, to start off with, this is uh, gonna be the scandal, and I don't know, hopefully a scathing rebuttal. So what's been going on at uh, Mobile Fidelity? Um, can't help it. I want to move on. I've got other stuff to do. We've got things, videos lined up to take you to manufacturers and whatnot. Going to get to that. Um, but let, let, let's get started because we've had some uh, comments now and I've been sitting on them for a while and things that have come out in the absolute sound and put on the website of MoFi and Music Direct. But I wanted to start with this. Many people had said, you know, you really, uh, you, you audio files, you, you don't know what you're talking about. So I pulled back a, a review that I remembered that happened on the Blood, Sweat, and Tears, MoFi versus the Analog Productions. And here's Michael 45 or Michael Ludwig. And that's what he was saying about it. The system you may know, it's, it's the Einstein system. And, and my thoughts, my impression is, that I don't know what or how they've done it with the one step, but what struck me was the drumming. Mm. The drums. Totally different than on the analog production. Yeah. I was yeah, so surprised different. to hear this huge of a difference. Huge difference, huh? Um, Amazing. But of course, Same master has tape. nothing to do with quality in a way. Of, that may come due to this to this vinyl, I don't know. The the one step is for me the more analytical one. Wonder why. You yeah. know? Uh, uh, How could it be more analytical? A little more detail, a little more sound stage, a little more drama in a way, uh, which is a very good thing for this, by the way, incredible great album. I love that album. The love the album. Fantastic. Yeah. When it comes to the to the analog production, for me there is more the flair of vinyl. The mm -hmm. vinyl, really? More what does that mean? Musicality. Musicality. Mm -hmm. A little yeah. more, more calmness. The the one step is incredible analytical in in, in my analytical. opinion. Analytical. And that that was yeah. for me the biggest difference. And and, and you so hear just... that in my opinion immediately. They are very very different. Yeah. You hear it immediately, he said. And you know, for people that uh, rodeo files have been saying this, you know, we do, and they go, well, wait, why weren't you saying this before? Well, I don't know, that came out quite a while ago. He didn't say it was digital. <laughs> Close, I mean, I don't know how else you'd say if you were gonna talk about something that was digital. And by the way, um, I wanna give the Raspberry Awards out. These aren't all of them, but this is quite a few of them from MoFi. I, I hate to do this because, you know, uh, my collection worth goes down as we sit here. Eric Clapton, one of the worst sounding albums you could ever have on a one step. Go try it. You won't believe how bad it is. Can't believe how bad this one is either. How in the world do you screw up on a classic Carol King tapestry? I don't know. But as soon as I put this on, because I got one to, to go and one to show, like a lot of people did, you know, because that's how you're trying to afford these, these things. Uh, it was so bizarre. I went and I thought, I've got to pull out my regular vinyl ones immediately because what in the world did I just buy? Apparently other people believe in this too because, you know, it's not even going, you know, new, new copies didn't hold their value were, were spit. I wonder why these copies didn't. Oh, another one. Oh, this has been a big winner. Of course, then again, it was put out by other people, and all of the others sound better, and they're cheaper. Same with this. I cannot believe I look so forward to this, actually, thinking, okay, if they're going to get on one step, it'll be good. Now, I could show any of the one steps. Uh, some of them, you know, when they, they have a little bit of uh, data coming out, like the Bill Evans. The Bill Evans with digital gonna sound fine because you don't need as much uh, data or resolution uh, on a three piece. 
Um, but we have the, the, the statements, and I wanted to go through this from Jim Davis just a little bit. I'm going to be fast on this, since I know most of you have been through this. Uh, Robert Harley grabs him, and actually didn't grab him. He wouldn't take anything live, but, you know, if you want to give him written questions. And just remember, we're in the day and age where um, up is down and down is up. All you got to do is change the name, use a little bit of rhetoric, you know, and it's okay. You didn't lie. You just you just weren't as forthcoming. But he asked him, you know, well, why did you decide to do this with the DSD? And it really boils down to two things. He tried to say it was the noise floor, which is amazing because a couple of other labels do this who... Analog Productions, I think. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they 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 do it, and they don't they don't have this problem. He said when they would go from tape to tape with the uh, noise floor. Um, case in point, I mean, geez, just just listen to uh, kind of blue uh, on both of them. But he wants to say that that it was uh, their evaluation. It was superior Sonics to do a DSD compared to a cut that's direct from the analog tape. And then he wants to tout this again as Tim Dare. Part of a teeny modified Studer A80 tape machine. Um, he's talked a lot about it since most of us have, have never really been there when it goes on. I have no idea if it's good or bad. Um, uh, he wants to talk about how hard they work and that they have exhausting days they put in. Um, he says beyond the additional time, effort, and the expense. I mean, it is so hard for these guys to go out and to do this. I don't even know why they do. I mean, they're walking up, you know, both ways, and who knows? I mean, they leave their canteen, and and if they lose it, they're gonna die in the, in the in the recording studio trying to get a DSD transfer. So, what year was it? Well, he says it was 2011. You know, with the Tony Bennett. Of course, he didn't know because I don't know. He's president of the company, owner of the company, um, but he doesn't know. 2011 is when he was told, I guess, because he doesn't know. Turns out it was 2007. Right now. Who knows, it could be earlier. Says, are any of the MoFi LP still mastered from tape? Says, the last one was a David Crosby. Um, I guess with the David Crosby, all the other crap that they mention about why they, you, you have to get a DSD transfer really didn't, didn't mix. So who knows? I mean, talking out of both sides of his mouth. Now he wants him to clarify the precise process and the signal chain for cutting a lacquer from the analog master tape. And uh, so he wants to talk about how hard it is that they have to do the azimuth. They have to line the azimuth up. As if no one else in the industry has ever done this before. They're the first people that have ever thought about having a correct azimuth and, uh, and alignment settings. So he goes through this laborious process that they do. Uh, they have to evaluate the tape. The, the engineers capture the first song or up to the first edit. And, and each splice point, he has to realign the azimuth. Uh, the precision alignment's crucial, and I'm sure it takes, I don't know, at least two days on each each cut, according to him, because it's taken them weeks, absolutely weeks, just to get a transfer of these when they go out, you know? And uh, anyway, the, the bottom line is here, when you read this, he actually gives not a bad uh, recitation of what it's like to actually go for any company that has to go and make a vinyl record. Shocker. He is using the same type of stuff that anybody has to put out a vinyl record. It's just, it's just disappointing to me that they continue to do this and he continues to try to justify how they're charging and they started to charge double more than others. And what you got for it was a little bit more of a wooden box um, trying to think of what else you got beyond because they were putting out 40, you know, a lot of stuff on 45 RPM. So I, I don't know, outside of a marketing gimmick. Uh, and then he's trying to talk about how they, they cut the, uh, cut it down on the one step. But, you know, between you and I, I don't really know that um, the way that they talk about cutting it down, if it's led to any improvements in the audio. I mean, if it has, it, it, it hasn't stood up to many others um, who aren't doing that. But now that's a plug for uh, Acoustic Sounds or Chad Kassam for doing it right. It says, uh, this is on his website, since its inception, AP or Analog Productions has reissued hundreds of titles ranging from classical to folk, pop, rock, blues, and jazz. 
Notice that, hundreds of titles. They put out more than MoFi. But of course, MoFi can't get the master tapes. They can't figure out how to do it any other way. But somehow this guy did, you know, I don't know. I, I know that Jim Davis has, has made a lot of money, he made 40 million, or they grossed 40 million in music direct last year, which is, you know, that's incredible. Um, that's a lot of money. This guy's been been milking uh, stupid audio files for a long time. All of his idiot audio files. He's he's really made made good strides on. So they've had that. I mean, they they have had. Um, we know that they've had uh, Blue Note reissues, The Doors, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Creedence, Clearwater Revival, Nat King Cole, Nora Jane Jones. True to its name, Analog Productions works with the original master tapes more than any other reissue label. The result is superior sound, richer, warmer, and more lifelike than digital. He puts it right there. What is it? It's richer, warmer, and more lifelike than digital. You mean it's probably not analytical. It's probably not stale. It's probably not anything that, that what Michael 45 RPM says when he does his review. By the way, big kudos out to him. He noticed this and knew uh, something was up with MoFi at the time he criticized them when they put out an Alan Parsons and recognized how cheap they went on a cover. I really wasn't with him on that, but I should have been because uh, I don't have it here. I was gonna bring my uh, a Jimi Hendrix I got for under 20 bucks and the foil that um, uh, Michael Ludwig talked about and said that he was hoping that that's what would be on the release from Mobile Fidelity um, wasn't there. Guess it was too costly. That's why you have to go and get it under $20 and, and something that's really nice on that they've done on other albums. Um, I wanted to share this just with you to end. I had a, had a comment a number of days ago talking about the Beatles mono vinyl box set in 2014 got a digital treatment, as they mentioned in the leaflet for Please Please Me. Thus, this is not an analog mastering at all. Don't be fooled by the name. All the vinyl purists have been exposed as a bunch of liars. Well, we can all thank MoFi, Jim Davis, and the whole crew. I'm the liar. I was so stupid. I was their customer. And becoming their customer, and I don't know, trusting in them a little bit, made me a liar. Probably made you a liar, too, if you bought them. And I got news for MoFi and the rest. I don't know where this is all going to hang out, you know, shake down for you. Um, a lot of the, the guys I see that are defending MoFi didn't buy them. They are not the big one-step buyers that have come in and gone, oh, I really love them. Most of the time what you'll hear is, well, yeah, I bought, you know, I, I have one. You know, I may have, I may have two. They're not the guys who really came in and were buying. But, you know, it's a great marketing strategy to make sure that your customers are called liars. Hi-Fi Live, out. <laughs>